This is Carolyn Greiner, a materials engineer, and physicist Ann Whitaker. The place is NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Both hope to be among this country's first women to travel into space. They, like several others, have been practicing, simulating space work on the ground. Diving into a tank filled with a million and a half gallons of water is just one example. It was here that astronauts trained for Skylab, and it's here that training for Space Lab, a cooperative venture between NASA and the European Space Agency, is underway. Space Lab will fit into the payload section of the airplane-like shuttle now being built for missions beginning in 1980. Carolyn Greiner describes the underwater work. And what we get out of working in the neutral buoyancy simulator is the handling of experiment packages, of experiment hardware, in something that closely approximates the zero gravity environment. This jet plane is also being used to help prepare women for space flight. After reaching altitude, the big jet is pulled up to a 45 degree angle, and then the pilot pushes over causing a period of weightlessness for about 30 seconds. The short duration zero-g tests allow future space travelers to become accustomed to weightlessness and also to practice experiments without gravity. At NASA's Ames Research Center near San Francisco, 12 nurses went through five weeks of medical tests to help set standards for non-astronaut passengers on the space shuttle and to investigate responses to space flight conditions. Go. Three, two, one, go. For example, the low acceleration forces experienced during long-duration shuttle re-entry into the atmosphere were simulated on a centrifuge. Women in space. With the space shuttle moving from the design stage to production, women are expected to play a major role in this country's future flights beyond Earth.